from the media. Good afternoon. Last time we met on February the 20th. Today we meet again 15 days later. In the past few days, medical workers, police, and the community officials have earnestly implement the decisions and instructions from the CPC Central Committee and the State Council. They are working on the front line and stay committed and spare no efforts to fight and win the battle against the COVID-19. Journalists from the press, they have recorded the coverage of Wuhan. Here on behalf of the Central Steering Group, on behalf of Vice Premier Sun Chenlan, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you. In fighting against the epidemic, General Secretary Xi Jinping personally led this endeavor. WHO acknowledged that the Chinese government has taken the most flexible and active measures to contain the virus. We have impeded the vast transmission of the virus and also stopped the transmission for tens of thousands of people. Under such circumstances, we also protect the safety of the international community. We are building the first defense line for the COVID-19. We are actually saving time for the world to fight against the COVID-19. Under the leadership of CBC Central Committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, per instruction of the uh, Central Steering Group, Vice Premier lead the Central Steering Group and work at the front lines. And we have always implemented the general requirement to enhance the confidence, stay united, take scientific preventive measures and make targeted implementation. We spare no efforts to admit all people that need to be admitted and also we treat these people who are needed to be admitted. We spare no efforts for the medical rescue. This is of our top priority for the rescue work. Vice Premier Chair Asperts meeting for studies and understanding of the COVID-19. We focus on the fourth concentration principle and also we take proactive actions and make use of TCM as well as the Western medicine. We have an early intervention of the medical services to mild cases and also we organize an expert group to treat patients in a critical and severe condition. We experience, we accumulated experiences and also we launched the seventh version of the guideline for treatment and diagnosis. And also we are setting up a two standardized guidelines and a diagnosis guideline to treat patients under severe and critical conditions. Each day, number of cure patients and discharge patients in Wuhan is over a thousand. That is to say, we have reached an effective treatment for the patients. And also we are providing psychological counseling to the relatives of the patients. At the same time, we attended to those attending to those patients who need our help. And also we are paying attention to health care centers, uh, prisons, nurseries to make sure that the virus cannot be spread inside and exported outside. And also we are making a lot of efforts to build a virus free community. Currently we are still facing a daunting task in the epidemic control in Hubei and Wuhan. We have to rise up to the challenge in order to fight and win the battle. We believe with the strong leadership of CBC Central Committee with Comrade Xi Jinping as core, there's no difficulties that we cannot conquer. Thank you.
Thank you for Mr. Ding's introduction. Now the floor is open for questions. Please raise your questions from video call, and please identify yourself before raising the question. Since the outbreak of the epidemic, China has taken a lot of measures, and they're making utmost efforts to contain the virus inside of Wuhan. This is actually a contribution to the world, and the epidemic also posed challenges to the world. People have limited knowledge about the virus and the coronavirus. China has accumulated valuable experiences, and we could see some countries already have some cluster outbreak. I want to understand whether China will offer some assistance to those countries, and what experience can you share to the other countries? Seeing the severity of the COVID-19, China has established a leading group in fighting against the COVID-19. So the leading group is actually chaired and instructed by General Secretary Xi Jinping, and also we set up the central steering group to monitor the situation of the COVID-19. At the same time, we also established an interagency task force. At the same time, the central government also dispatched a central steering group in Hubei. We have 11 people at ministerial level who are working at the front line to provide guidance for the epidemic control in Wuhan. This is an a institutional arrangement for the country. We have focused on five aspects. First, we have a top-down level coordination. We coordinate all activities of the nation to guide the COVID-19 control and prevention work. Also, we will publish all of the information in due course in a transparent manner so that we can interact with the society. Third, we are taking a scientific method for the prevention control. Fourth, we focus on key issues and focusing on the prevention control as well as the guarantee of the supplies. Also, we are launching a people's war to fight against the epidemic. The reason why we are taking a unified guidance and the leadership is because that in China we have 1.4 billion people. If there is an outbreak, it may bring huge impact to the society. For some of the countries, we realize that for one city, it is not sufficient to counteract with the COVID-19. This situation also applies in Wuhan city. I would like to name a few examples. In the past few months, in Hubei province, it has allocated over 4.6 million protective suits. In the past, the capacity in the medical supplies company is over 1,000 to 2,000 protective suits per day, which is not sufficient to meet the demand. And for the surgical mask, as of now, we have already used over 96 million masks. So if we only depend one on one city, its forces is limited. We cannot meet all of these needs. As we know that um, in Wuhan city for each day, we need uh, 3,000 hospital beds to receive these patients. I think this is a big challenge, not only in China, but also in the world at large. In the past few months, we only have like two designated infectious disease hospitals, and for the number of beds, it's less than 20,000. But as of now, we have over 48,000 patients diagnosed with COVID-19. So at earlier stage, we are quite worried about this situation because not all the patients can be received in the hospital. So at the same time, we are building on some of the uh, makeshift hospital. So on one hand, we are continue to expand our capacity in the infectious disease hospital, and each day we are adding 3,000 beds per day. And in the end, we are actually building 86 designated hospitals and over 16 makeshift hospitals. And as of now, we have over 60,000 beds to admit the patients. If one hospital can only uh, receive 1,000 patients, which we consider as a top A hospital, within one month, we have to calculate this number, how many beds we need. 
So that means that we need to have like 68 level hospitals. But it is a daunting task for us to build 60 hospitals within one month. So that's why we have this unified guidance and leadership from the central government. And also we have some local government support. We publish the information in a transparent manner so the society can get a full knowledge about the development of the COVID-19. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, many journalists come here to bring coverage. You are actually not required from the risk of being infected. You are actually coming here to bring the latest development and coverage to China and to the world at large. I would like to say a big thank you for all of your objective coverage. In scientific prevention, we have announced and uh, launched guidelines at different stages. All of these constitute the scientific prevention and control. And also we have made a lot of achievements in the area of scientific research. With the participation of people, we will have, we can't achieve all of these outcomes. That's why we call this war is a people's war. Some people are asking that many people have been locked down in the city and locked down in their community. And actually, the epidemic prevention and control is like an outbreak of war. The government asks people to hide in the shelters. By doing that, it may cause some inconveniences or discomfort to the people. But if we are not doing that, it may cause more casualties. So that's why we ask the people to stay at home. That's why we lock down the city. And this is the way how we cut the virus from spreading. Today, we are so proud to see that for people in Wuhan and officials, they consider the overall interest. And each one of them are making their own contribution in fighting against the COVID-19. Once again, I would like to say a big thank you to all of you. Please keep up with our work. We will win the battle. The leader of the Central Steering Group, Vice Premier Sun Chunlan, inspected communities in Wuhan. And you may saw some of the videos of that inspection. There may be some uh, problems. For example, some people are seeing that there may be some uh, formalities and bureaucracy. And after Vice Premier understood those situation, she immediately made instructions and asked the Central Steering Group to carry out investigations to understand those situation. And yesterday, she hosted another meeting and asked for improvement for the situation. We have to be realistic and practical and rise up to the challenge and resolve all of those problems that concerns our people. In facing with the epidemic, uh, we need to strengthen our cooperation with other countries. So international collaboration is the key. According to the information from MOFA, China has already provided assistance to several other countries, for example, Pakistan, the African Union, we offer them with the NAT and some diagnosis treatment plans. And the Chinese Red Cross Association Society also provide NAT to Iran. And also we send a experts group uh, to Iran to understand the current situation. And later on, we will continue to have this kind of uh, collaboration with other countries. We will do what we can to provide assistance to those countries. Thank you.
是来自澳门澳亚卫视的澳门澳亚卫。那么我的问题是想问，中国目前是否已经有了足够的 ？My question is that is China have sufficient medical resources to counteract COVID-19, especially in Hubei province? I would like to give the floor to Mr. Jiang Ping. It concerns all of us about the development of the COVID-19. It is our top priority to ensure the relief supplies. General Secretary Xi Jinping attached great importance to the prevention and control work, and he made instructions and guidance on many occasions for the supplies of the medical resources. And Premier Li Keqiang also gave us a lot of instructions on that. With the leadership of Vice Premier Sun Chunlan, MIIT, NDRC, working together with the localities to form a medical supplies group. We are raising against the time and collect supplies, supplies and resources from outside. And also, we make uh, national mobilizations to ensure we have sufficient supplies. With joint efforts, as of now, the supplies guarantee in Hubei has shown three positive signs. First, for medical supplies, at the beginning, we are in shortage. Later on, we have sufficient um, supplies. And now we can completely meet the needs in Hubei province. And the second is for the key medicines. At the beginning, the hospital uh, purchased these medicines. And later, the government uh, allocated 10 days of inventory of the key medicines. And third, for the key medical equipment, in the past, we were running short, but now we have sufficient medical equipment to treat the patients. For each city of Hubei province, we have already equipped the cutting edge and advanced medical equipment to treat the patients. And also, we have sufficient disinfectant and with stable market supply. The reason why we have these positive signs is because we are receiving strong support from the CPC Central Committee and the State Council. And also, we are receiving strong support from different departments and different uh, provincial governments. And the key enterprises have also offered strong support to assist the Hubei province. And also, I would like to thank all of the medical workers for their boundless love and devotions. Currently, we see um, some of the companies has already resumed work and production. Now, the production of these supplies has been increased. For example, for the protective suits, the daily capacity has been largely increased. At the beginning, we have less than 20,000 suits, but now the daily amount is around 500,000. And for the N95, the daily capacity have reached 1.6 million pieces. And for the other daily supplies and the medical supplies has been dramatically increased for the capacity as of March the 5th. We allocated over 5.3 million protective suits and tens of millions of N95 to Hubei province. And we have allocated 38 types of uh, medical equipment to Hubei province. And for the ventilators, we have allocated over 20 2,000, uh, and including 67 ECMO and 15,000 ECG monitor. And also, we are pro providing 699 negative pressure ambulance to Hubei province. We are giving full use of the uh, manufacturing industry in 
China in a short period of time through mobilizing and arranging resources nationwide. We have improved our capacity in producing the medical supplies and the relief supplies. Recently, I found the um, head of the WHO have made a appeal to the manufacturers around the world that all countries should increase their capacity in producing the medical supplies. Now the situation of epidemic control in China is improving right now. China is able to do what we can to provide medical supplies to countries that in need. We also encourage our domestic manufacturers to work with overseas counterparts so that they can make their contribution in fighting against the COVID-19. With CNN, we are aware that the Chinese government has announced a series of diagnoses and the treatment guidelines which emphasize the importance of TCN. And some of the people are cured by using the TCN. And also in a WHO China joint pressure, they also mentioned that uh, one of the Western medicine is also effective in treating the patients, the redesivir. So I want to understand whether Chinese philosophy in treating the patients is contradicted with the US. So can you tell us more about the treatment effect of the TCM? So first of all, thank you very much for your interest in the role of TCM. So for a Chinese treatment plan, it is actually a combined use of TCM and Western medicine. So TCM has actually played a key role in the treatment plan. This is our credit to the well function of the TCM. As you focus on the function of TCM, I would like to elaborate that in three aspects. First, TCM have a very good uh, clinical uses in malaria and some epidemic. At the starting stage, we do not have an effective Western medicine to cure those infectious disease. That's why we are using the TCM to improve the immunity so that it can help the patients to recover on their own. And actually, the, the performance of TCM can be proven in treating SARS and H1N1. Second, it is proven that TCM and Western medicines can work together and help the patients be cured. As of now, over 50,000 patients have been cured. A majority of them has been using the TCM during their recovery. And the expert group has also analyzed the function of TCM, and their conclusion is that the combination use of the TCM and Western medicine can alleviate the symptoms of fever, coughing, sour throat, poor appetite, and fatigue. It can shorten the duration of hospital stays and also prevent mild symptoms from developing into severe and critical condition. I would like to use some of the examples to explain this issue. Actually, earlier we have conducted a um, contrast with 452 samples. And we found that if we are using uh, TCM to treat these patients, so more people are likely to turn negative in a shorter time. 
and also some people are so showing positive results in changing their CT radiographic results. And fewer mild symptoms, patients are deteriorating and developing into critical conditions. And also we compare patients who are receiving the combination of TCM and Western medicine and another group just used Western medicine. And the results shows that group with combined treatment of TCM and Western medicine can be cured three days less compared to the other group. So by using the TCM, we can also see a very good performance for people that are turning from severe condition to critical condition. So the TCM National Administration also organized a 12 expert group. So they are actually providing more guidance uh, to the hospitals so that they could use a combination of TCM and the Western medicine. And for some patients, we are only treating them with TCM. We draw on the experiences for, from the recovered patients. And we found that some of the people at the beginning stage, they're actually in a severe condition. And after taking TCM, these people are getting better in their symptoms. Now we're still studying the pathology and the cases. And later on, we will give you more updates about the function of TCM. During the outbreak of the COVID-19, the General Secretary Xi Jinping has always emphasized that we have to put some equal emphasis on TCM as well as the Western medicine. We would love to share the Chinese treatment plan and the Chinese medicine so that more people can understand the TCM and could better use TCM in treating the patient. By dealing with the COVID-19 this time, if we are using TCM to the patients, these people recovered much quickly, so it actually enhanced their confidence to be cured with people's daily. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19, uh, many hospital workers are, were infected. So what caused that to be happened? What measures are you taken to protect the medical workers at the front line? Indeed, at the early stage of the outbreak of COVID-19, especially in January, in Hubei province, over 3,000 medical workers were infected. 40% were infected inside of the hospital and 60% were infected in their communities. All of these people are people from Hubei province and the majority of them are not uh, doctors and nurses from the Department of Infectious Disease. So at the early stage, we will say we may have a lack of knowledge about the epidemic and the disease. We are not taken sufficient uh, protection. And some of the medical workers even sacrificed their lives due to the outbreak of the COVID-19. This is saddened to all of us. General Secretary Xi Jinping attached great importance to the care for the medical workers, and he made many important instructions. He actually sent out care and support to medical workers who are working at the front line. When we found uh, some of the uh, medical workers were infected, we are also uh, formulating a cosonomia infection guideline, and we also conducted uh, supervision and provide trainings to the medical workers. If they are not receiving, receiving the uh, trainings, they cannot uh, go to the front lines. And also we are taking a shifting uh, schedule for the medical workers. As of now, we uh, see we have uh, enhanced our strength in the protection of medical workers. We have largely reduced the risk for hospital-acquired infections.
As of now, we have over 45,000 medics uh, coming all around China to support Hubei province. As of now, uh, no hospital, uh, no medical workers were infected in this regard. These people, they are setting aside their personal interest and march forward courageously and resolutely. As we all say, some people sacrificing their life during the fight with the COVID-19. Weiling from Huashengshan Hospital, and there is a number of medical workers. They are setting aside their personal interest and serve the country and serve the people. So you are the heroes who are protecting our people. I remember one patient said. They're always saying that even though the stars are very bright, but you have not yet seen the eyes of the doctors because the doctors and nurses are giving hope to me. For the medical workers who are supporting Hubei province, uh, we have some younger generations who were born after 90s and after 2000. Uh, 2020, and actually there were over 12,000 people who were coming from this age group. So for this younger generation, these young doctors and nurses, they are showing their sense of responsibility by using their concrete actions. Yesterday, they are children with their parents, but now they are the backbone of the country and they are representing the image of the nation. Here, on behalf of the Central Steering Group, once again, I would like to pay my highest tribute to all of the medical workers who are working at the front line. Thank you. With China Daily, in fighting against the COVID-19, some of the companies have suspended uh, their business, and I realize uh, some of the companies are transferring their business overseas. I would like to understand uh, whether some of the foreign investing companies were infected because of the epidemic. To be frank, in a short-term period of time, epidemic has caused impact to the social and economic life. The central government has attached great importance to this regard. We are also taking coordinated efforts to improve the epidemic control and the economic social development. At the same time, we are also launching a series of measures for the resumption of work and production. We are streamlining our processes, improving our services, and take targeted measures to ensure a orderly resumption of work and production. And for some key enterprises who are affected by the COVID-19, we will provide more support to these companies to ensure a stable supply chain. We have followed closely on the impact for the economic cycle. For the labor-intensive sectors, such as textile, electronics, and automobiles, these sectors will be hit in a short time. If we look at the regions, so Hubei province is one of the hard-hit regions. The epidemic has directly struck the economic activities in Hubei province, and this effect will be carried forward to other nations, uh, other countries. 
and this will affect the supply chain for some overseas companies. We are mobilizing a range of resources nationwide and also taking coordinative efforts for the resumption of work and the production and also addressing some of the challenges faced by the SMEs. We are giving full play to the market role. At the same time, we are also offering policies to support the business for key supply chain and the key enterprises, we will take targeted measures. MIIT has already signed a liaison office officer to address the problems that has been posed by some of the key sectors and the key companies. Responding to the challenges faced by the SMEs, the State Council has also launched a series of policies. And different localities also announced a series of measures which will guarantee the work of the SMEs. As of now, outside of Hubei province, enterprises above destiny size have resumed at over 90% resumption rate. For example, Zhejiang, Guangdong, Shandong, and Zhejiang province, the resumption rate is over 90%. And also we are seeing more and more SMEs are resuming work and production. The rate is over 52%. So we will see it. the fundamentals of Chinese economy remain strong. The impact of the epidemic is temporary, and the epidemic is controllable in China. I would like to emphasize that we will treat state-owned enterprises and overseas enterprises as equals, so that these companies will enjoy the same benefits and the services. Thank you. With CCTV, Science, the most important thing to fight against the COVID-19. General Secretary also emphasized that uh, we have to speed up our R&D efforts to counteract COVID-19. Any progress have we made in the area of scientific pre prevention? And what is the highlight for what is the highlight going forward? Thank you. General Secretary has attached great importance for the scientific prevention and control of the COVID-19. Per instructions of the Central Steering Group, we have moving forward our efforts in R&D for fighting against the COVID-19. Department of Science and Technology, Education Department, as well as NHC has already formed an R&D group. We also focus on the areas of the R&D of the medicines, vaccines, big data, and other nine areas. We mobilize all the scientific resources to take actions to combat the COVID-19. So in the treatment areas, we will make use of the combination of TCM and the Western medicine. For mild cases, we will also run clinical tests for these people so that we can prevent these people with mild symptoms from developing into severe cases. And TCM has played a key role in this regard. For the academician group has also discovered a new TCM and showing that it can help to uh, ease the clinical symptoms of the patients with mild symptoms. And all of these results are quite positive. And 
later on, uh, Ms. Yu can give you more updates. As for the technology for um, the patients under severe and critical condition, we are using the blood plasma for treatment. And this can help us to reduce the mortality rate. In the area of the development of the vaccines, we are focusing on five areas. So er as early as the middle of April, we will apply all of these vaccines for clinical test. All of these are good news to us. In the testing areas, the scientist has already Develop a certain of test kits. As of March the first, we have already a hundred reagent test kits available for testing. We will continue our efforts in the area of R and D so that we can develop uh, more achievements and outcomes in combating against the COVID nineteen. My question is about the resources of NAT. So how many resources available in the nuclear assay test? So can you tell us more about the effect of the NAT? Thank you for your question. Chinese government attach great importance for the R&D of NAT of COVID-19. On March the 2nd, General Secretary Xi Jinping inspected the work of COVID-19 and also he asked the latest development about the testing technology. Premier Li Keqiang also instructed us to provide a more convenient reagent for the test. MIT has been coordinating with relevant companies to accelerate the research of the reagent test. As of now, there were 12 manufacturing manufacturers and producers obtained the license to develop these reagent test kit. My work is to ensure the medical resources. I will give you some data in relate to the test kit. As of March the 5th, we have offered 15.3 million test kits. And with a daily capacity of 341,000. As of now, we still have 2 million NAT reagent test kits in our inventory, which could meet all the demands in Hubei province. With Hubei satellite, can you tell us more about the function of T TCM? Any advantages in using TCM in treating COVID-19? This is a good question. Earlier, when I answering the questions, I have already tell us tell you the differences between the TCM and the inf and the Western medicine. And for the TCM, it will help to improve, improve the immunity of the human body. So it is better to use uh, TCM to treat the infectious disease. And it actually offers a different treatment method to the patients. At the onset of the outbreak, with clinical analysis, we can confirm a TCM treatment plan, and we could see it, the symptoms can be eased in a faster speed. 
during the epidemic, when using TCM, we can also enhance the confidence for the patients. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19, the TCM experts, they are actually learning the pathology of the COVID-19 and also they keep improving their prescriptions in their clinical diagnosis. So we are taking an early intervention of the TCM to treat the patients. For people with mild cases, with mild symptoms, if we can use TCM at the earlier stage, they can be recovered soon. And for uh, people in severe and critical condition, we will use TCM together with Western medicine. And also, we could use acupuncture to help the patients recover. And it is proven that the TCM have a very good performance in treating the COVID-19. That's why in the seventh diagnosis and the treatment guidelines, we could see uh, some of the TCM treatment has been included into the guideline. And also, we are actually combining the theories together with the clinical symptoms. And this is actually a innovative method that we use TCM to treat the patients. We also want to educate uh, the functions of TCM to the general public. And also, we would like to uh, share some of the, our experiences for treatments by using TCM. Last question. The NHC has said that the situation of the epidemic control is contained right now. Does that mean that we can lift uh, some of the restrictions? Or what standards we have to meet in order to lift uh, some of those restrictions? You may be aware of some of the latest data about the epidemic. Actually, the uh, situation of epidemic control in Wuhan is improving, but still, we still see a high percentage of Wuhan and Hubei for confirmed cases in China. And also, we have um, over 20,000 people in Hubei province under severe and critical condition. And Wuhan is still the epicenter in curing the COVID-19. So as you're asking about when or how can we lift the restrictions, actually, I believe all of the people attach great importance to this issue. Even though right now the situation of the epidemic control in Wuhan is improving, but I believe our nation will look at the actual situation and, uh, and looking at the theories that are provided by the epidemiology studies and make relevant arrangements. And this morning, I see uh, the cherry blossoms. And this tells us that the winter is eventually past and spring is coming. I believe that they will come eventually. Once again, I would like to thank the three speakers and thank you all for particip participation. That's the end.